Another glorious, crafty day. Put your feet up. You're watching The Craft Show. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another excellent episode, if I do say so myself, of The Craft Show. I think we do a decent job here. We try our best anyway. If we don't, why are you still watching? And if we do, keep watching. We want to see you watching more. And don't forget, The Craft Show is not affiliated with any brands, other channels. We do what we do for the love of craft, and hopefully that's why you watch it too. And if you love craft, don't forget to check out the Craft Show Hub, which is www.thecraftshowhub.co.uk, where you can find everything crafty. There are projects to download, there are people to socialise with, there are videos to watch, and if you join the Craft Show Club, there's even a few discounts to be had. Go and check that out. Now, the Craft Show, of course, is not available on any mainstream channel. We are only available online, but you'll catch us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and a range of social media. And we are filming, as always, at the Craft Outlet, which is based at Springfields in Spalding. If you're not familiar with the Craft Outlet, have a look at the link, just there, down there somewhere, wherever Sean's decided to put it. But have a look and see what the Craft Outlet have got to offer. Now, it's not all about us. It's about the craft and the crafty demonstrations, and today is no different, because my guest in the studio today is, well... Quite arty, I think, is probably the best way to put it. It is Christine Dobbin. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Pleased to be here. Good. Well, we're very pleased to have you here as well, because it's nice to have an artist on the show. We often, it's not often, we don't get artists on the show, so it's nice. We filmed, this will be the second show we filmed very recently with an artist, but you're a different kind of artist, aren't you? Because you, you do watercolour. Yes. Um, but tell us a little bit about what you do and what your background is. Well, I um, went to university and studied uh, children's book illustration. Mm -hmm. um, but after studying for three years, I fancied a change and ended up working um, in a veterinary clinic for about 10 years, oh. different clinics. Um, and, but the, the art was still, you know, I, the creativity was mm. dying to get out. So yeah. I started just painting some cats uh, that I'd worked with and yeah. friends' cats and other people. Some of the clients would say, oh, you know, could you paint my cat? So I then started painting initially just cat portraits, nothing else, wouldn't do paint dogs, chickens, nothing else. <laughs> I was just too scared of anything else. But yeah. over the years, I've spent time you know, developing my pet portraits and I can paint dogs and anything feathered or furry or scaled or anything. Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, so and now I just do, like to do a bit of wildlife artwork. And also what I'm going to be painting today is a, a new sort of area for me. Oh, well, we're <laughs> going to look forward to seeing that. Just, just before we move on to that, just tell us where we can find out a little bit more about you. Uh, well, I'm currently building a new website at the moment, uh, which is live. Still, some areas of it still need to be um, updated, but it's www.christinedobbin.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, Christine Dobbin Art, where you'll find examples of my uh, portrait commissions and wildlife artwork and various other little experiments and so on. So we really want to see those fingers getting onto the social media, tap, 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 tap. Let's do not too much swiping. We yep. want to be checking out Christine's uh, social media and website. Okay, so we're going to be move on, move on now and we're going to start the demonstration. You said uh -huh. we were doing something a little bit different. Yes, well, just out of the blue, I was clearing out my uh, um, space in my mum's attic and I found my dinosaur collection from when I was a child. Mm. And I thought, hmm, that's not something I've painted before. So I've uh, been just working on a few dinosaurs, finding it very fun to do because you know, you can just go a bit crazy with dinosaurs. Yeah. You don't really know for sure what colour they were. Yeah, yeah. So they're just bright colours yeah. and 
Lots of fun. Lots of fun. To the do. only difficulty I've found with dinosaurs in the past is getting them to sit still yes, when you're trying to do yes, the painting. There, so, there is that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's have a look at the dinosaur that you've got yes. today. Yes. So this is uh, my most recent creation. Okay. You may recognise him from uh, Jurassic Park. Fantastic. The and sort of what sort of dry, one? What, what, what sort of a dinosaur is that? Let's test your dinosaur knowledge. Dinosaur knowledge. Um, I think I'm not sure of his scientific name, but I think he looks like an Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. He definitely looks like an Eric. Yeah, I'm sure he'll appreciate that a bit later. <laughs> Eric from the Craft Hour. Okay, so uh, what do we need to get started then, Christine? Yeah, well, I've just got um, a selection of um, uh, normal, sort of regular watercolours. I prefer to work from tubes like that. You know, okay. I feel you can get a more intense colour from them. Okay. And also some of my things that I've just carried on from university, uh, Dr. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolours, oh. which are great for anything if you want really vibrant colours. I don't use them for everything, not suitable for pet portraits, for yes, instance, yeah. because you don't get many day glow cats. No, but, uh, no. They're great for dinosaurs, and yeah. I'm using a nice turquoise blue, which is all over my hands yeah. already, <laughs> and a nice bright lemon yellow. So I just mix those in with the regular watercolours just to add a bit of you know, intensity here and I love and the name of those it's a bit like sometimes when you watch the used to watch the old sort of westerns and they had the chap that came through town and he had all these potions <laughs> doc was it doc, dr ph martins yeah yeah amber brew or whatever it was that they yeah. used to use for everything so we've got our watercolors is there a particular reason that you use those um the the, the inks um are just again just because of the really really intense color mm, um mm. and you know, they just they just inspire me. I used them at university a lot and went yeah. a bit crazy, but um, okay. uh, yeah, they just they just you need less of them yes. to create a you know, really definite colour. You can water them down if you want to mix yes. them up. Um, and you I, refer to them as inks as opposed to paints, which is interesting yeah. because I mean I know nothing about watercolour. Yeah, and, and that, that and might just be that's probably not correct, yeah. but they're yeah. a bit more inky. In inky there. than painty. Oh, I'd agree with that. I'd <laughs> yeah. agree with that. Yeah, because they're very very liquidy yeah. and they come. My droppers don't work very well at yeah. the moment, yeah. but they do come with a little. Dropper, so you do feel yeah. like you're you know creating some sort of uh, potions fabulous <laughs> fabulous um, so what do we need to do to get started how do we get started uh, then? well i always advise mixing up all the colors that you want to use in advance yes um so just so you know you've got plenty of them and you don't have to start messing around okay. in between fabulous so mix everything up yeah have your water yes. i like to have your know, three different tubs of water so i can you know, rinse and make sure the last okay. jar of water is the cleanest brush will come out of sure. it sure uh, also, I'm going to be using today a uh, wax relief crayon, okay. but you can use just a candle at mm -hmm. home, just a, a clear candle will do mm -hmm. the same job as this. Yeah. Also a little bit of table salt, yes. just for fun, yeah. um, and I like to have handy a uh, just some kitchen roll if there's any okay. mistakes or accidents. And I also have a newly discovered um, watercolour magic sponge thing which rubs okay. out watercolours. <laughs> Which is really handy. Yeah. Yeah, you well, you don't make mistakes. No, so no we don't never, never. About. But sometimes it can be fun just to use them for a little bit of sure. uh, mark making. So I'll have to Great. Watch. So yeah, I think that, and also just a little bit of paper on the side so you can test if your colours are right. Or okay. So. Good. How do we start this fella? Okay. Well, I've just fit, done the most boring bit first and just put a little black part for the eye Okay. In. Yeah. Um, there's lots of different ways you can work with watercolour. Mm -hmm. uh, you can paint just straight on to dry paper with watercolour. Uh, but I like a, what they call a wet on wet technique mm -hmm. um, just because it, it makes the colours just go a bit crazy and everything which is ha half the fun of watercolour mm -hmm. you don't have to be too precise and it's it takes a bit of time to not be scared okay. of watercolours you know because they do just they do their own thing but yeah. I find that often works in my favour <laughs> okay right so I'm going to start with his head and yes. just work backwards okay um and you sort of want to spend a bit more time maybe on a face because it's the, the, going to be the focal point. Mm -hmm. um, so you've put the water on there first. Yes, yeah. And as you see then it just, the, the, the colour is already moving around of its own accord yes. really. You know, you, the, the more you do it, the more you get familiar with what can happen yes. uh, with the colour and where it will go, where you put things. and. Mm -hmm. It's nice to leave some bits of paper that without water on them yeah. and also without any colour. Uh, the, the white part of the paper is almost as much your friend as the bits that you colour in, to be honest. Yeah, uh, do you know what? It's funny you should say that because it's, that's very effective on the finished one uh, that I'm just looking at very quickly. That's very effective how some of this has been left as white. It almost 
It's almost like a shadow, like a reverse shadow, yeah. using to accent part, parts of the, the dinosaur. Yeah, less can be more. Yeah, <laughs> as they say. Yeah. Uh, and I've also just realised that I forgot to do the first thing, which was with the wax relief oh, crayon. okay, yeah. Because what this will do, um, or your candle, it will mean that when you paint over it, the paint will just sort of fly disperse. off it. Yeah, disperse yeah. off it. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to just do that for his, his little teepee. Okay. Using the sort of sharp Oh, I see. End. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's good because and then I suppose that as well sort of saves you trying to be really get into that intricate, yeah. but you can be intricate with the with the relief. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to use it again, just anywhere where you might, you definitely don't want any colour. Mm -hmm. And it's good again for putting little markings on there. I'm going okay. to use the flat end. Mm -hmm. Just to give a little bit of uh, oh, that's very clever. Yeah, and you can really go in it. I'd say uh, dinosaurs. We don't know what patterns they had or what they're. Well, maybe scientists and archaeologists maybe do. Yes. But, um, yeah, but they're so, a bit boring. We're creative here. Yeah. This is these are your own dinosaurs. That's it right. doesn't even have to be. I quite often like just painting things that are inspired by a particular dinosaur that yeah. I like. It doesn't have to be. Nothing has to be. You know. The way the world says it is. No. Get creative and use your imagination, and yeah. that—that's what's fun about it. Um, you know, I usually start off by putting the lighter colours on first, and then adding the darker colours for definition. Mm -hmm. And would you say that it's part of the technique that you almost want the colours to run together, to merge yeah, together? Yeah, and it's great fun and it's so lovely to watch it happen. Yeah. Sometimes it's just nice just doing an experiment, just doing you know, just a straight piece of paper, just put some uh, paper on it and let your colours mix in together and you know, they do their own thing then. Um, and the dinosaur that you've, you, you're you um, painting at the moment, you started off with the pencil outline, is was that something that you'd perhaps traced from a book or is it i mean you're you're an artist of course but many people at home um perhaps might you know they might might be able to do the painting but getting the the, the, the dinosaur right in the first place might prove a little bit more challenging for them is it is yeah. it something you could trace yeah you could yeah got, like tracing you know it's not again it's not what i do but you know, it's if you want to concentrate on the painting, that the colours will still be your own. And yes, the, and I suppose with practice, it becomes something you might might be able to pick up also. Yeah, and talking about the pencil line, I just do a very very faint pencil line because yes. I don't want a def really hard line, and no. I, want, I want the the paint to do the talking, not. And the is it something you rub out afterwards, or you don't need to rub it out? Uh, I the... don't tend to rub it out on in this uh, situation. It. Um, so sort of emerges in or is hidden by the paint most of the time. If you're using a very pale colour, it may not. Yes. Uh, you know, but again, it's it's sort of part of the way I work. Really, it just. And it's unusual to see uh, this sort of um, character, so to speak, in a watercolour. I think you might have said that earlier. Um, but it works really well. I mean, when you think of watercolour, you often think of landscapes and and summer's days and and. Uh, Yes, you know all this sort of stuff you, you don't necessarily tend to think of this kind of well i don't it doesn't doesn't wouldn't occur to me yet it works brilliantly well yeah and it's just like you say like and i love working with these colors you know again i've painted some other dinosaurs in pinks and yellows and things uh, which you know look great but i just love the green and yeah. you can see the difference in this particular one i'm using at the moment mm. as some of the dr martin ink in there whereas this this particular green here doesn't, so it's just slightly more. And when we refer muted. to the Doc Martin ink, we're not referring referring to the popular television program. No, nope, we nope. are to talking about uh, <laughs> Doctor Martin's watercolor inks. Yeah, again, they're, you know, they I think they're quite pricey, but you know, I would invest in a lemon yellow if you wanted to experiment mm -hmm. mm. um, as a, a good starting point. So, if you wanted to. Um, you know, if you were starting out, obviously you, that's a particular brand that you, you use. Um, are there any brands, uh, are there any sort of price points you'd steer clear of? Or do you find that actually you can get them really very good value? Or you do need to invest even when you're starting out in, the, in sort of some more expensive I think to, paints. you know, it's a long time since I've probably used the very basic stuff. My mum used to paint in watercolour, so mm -hmm. I just 
pinched hers, I think, when I went to school. <laughs> uh, but you know, obviously, the more you pay, maybe the better the pigment might be more intense. And yes. You'll, yeah. You, you have more control then. Yes. And also, there's you, you can find in different stores artist grade watercolor paint, and yes. then just sort of, some of them are called college or student. Oh, okay. So, you know, so there's different. There's a lot out there. Good. And I think you know, if it's something you want to try, I would just go with whatever you can afford yeah. as a beginning point. And you don't need all the colours. Yes. Again, that's something else I'd recommend. Yes. I quite often use um, just uh, blue, red, uh, brown, and a yellow. Okay. And for pet portraits, yeah. you, know, you can get most of, sort of shades pretty and much things. Everything. And the more you mix your own colours, the yeah. when the, the paint bleeds out on the water, yes. it, the, the, the colours sort of separate a bit more. Yeah, yeah. So, Oh, I see. Oh. Do you know what? I, I like his little hand there, but you know, there's something missing from that hand. Oh, a cup of tea, maybe? Yeah, a cup of tea! <laughs> you took the word dry out of my mouth. Should we have a quick crafty brew? Sounds perfect. We're going to have a quick crafty brew while you take a quick look at this. Hey, creatives! Welcome to my mini series Five Minute fat quarters and this is the series where i show you some fun and fabulous fat quarter makes in five minutes or under no frills no fluff just fat quarter so without further ado let's go on with today's fat quarter make you only need half a fat quarter or two quarters of a fat quarter if they are different materials scissors a ruler, chalk, a zip, clips or pins, matching thread and a sewing machine. So to begin with cut your material into two quarters that are obviously the same size. I chose to use a different material for the lining so I've got one quarter of each of the materials. Then place your two pieces of material wrong side together so the pattern of the material will be facing both up and down. And then we're just going to focus on adding the zip. So fold a small hem about half an inch facing upwards. Separate your zip so that it's in two halves and it's a little bit easier. And you're going to attach the bottom side of the zip to this side of the material so make sure your zip is facing outwards it's facing the right way and here you'll see the material that is on top is going to be the lining material so that is the material that will be in the middle of the pencil case then clip or pin this zip into place and then using a zipper foot if you have one uh, you probably will need one for this project as it is really quite small and quite tight you're then going to do a straight stitch across the zip to secure it in place so next just fold up a hem in exactly the same way on the opposite side of the material and then we're just going to attach the opposite side of the zip to that side of the material and that should then join it in together in like a tube kind of shape. So again just pin and stitch this part of the zip into place. We are now starting to see the shape of a pencil case a little bit more. Uh, we're going to turn it inside out and then just do a couple of straight stitches at either side of the zip just to secure the bag into place so it's all closed up. To make this a really really easy pencil case just do two straight stitches down either of those open ends and you can finish it there if you want to. But to make it a little bit jazzier, I just marked a V-shape that came from where the middle of the pencil case was to either corner, just to kind of create this arrow shape on either side. Then I sewed across these lines, just a straight stitch. And then I carefully cut the this arrow shape out, just being really careful not to cut across the stitching. With our snazzy pointy ends now intact, turn the pencil case the right way around and just push out all those corners. Again, you could leave it here if you wanted to keep the snazzy shape that it's got going on. But just to finish it off, I just hand stitched those two end corners together. 
just to give it a bit more shape and just add a little bit of an extra detail on there. I thought this was a fab little extra feature as this means the pencil case can actually be hung on a bag or a book bag or anything like that. And voila, we are done! Sorry about that. Um, so, if you've only just joined us, uh, I am here with Christine Dobbin, uh, watercolourist, and uh, Christine is busy creating this fantastic dinosaur out of watercolours. Unusual to find a character like this in watercolours, but something you mentioned earlier, Christine, was that you did children's book illustration, and that would be great in a dinosaur book as well, wouldn't it? Well, it'd be, yeah, it's nice to be in a book. <laughs> you only take us, the bidding starts at 500 quid. Joking aside though, if you do like what Christine does, you can find Christine, whereabouts? Uh, my website, mm -hmm. www.christinedobbin.com. Okay. And Facebook, uh, Instagram and Twitter, Christine Dobbin Art. And I forgot to mention earlier, there are prints of all my dinosaur oh. paintings available. Yeah, yeah. I was only joking as well. You really can get the, the prints as well. Yep, Fantastic. Prints. So where do we get up to then? Uh, well, just before uh, we had a cup of tea, I, I'd done uh, his face mm -hmm. uh, as a starting point. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't resist carrying on just to do his, uh, <laughs> his little leggies there, yep. as dangerous as they might be. So yep. I was just going to start um, going along uh, his sort of main uh, torso, neck, yep. body area. Okay. Um, quite often it's a good thing, or quite what I used to do, before I was sort of advised by tutors and things, you know, you just pick a small brush and just use that so you, yeah. can, you can be all detailed. But what's quite fun, again, which helps with watercolour, use a bigger brush, you know, because then things can potentially get a little bit messy, but mm -hmm. that, again, that's part of the fun. Mm. Uh, so I'm just putting some clean water over his uh, body here. Is it important to keep it uh, wet all the time? Um, not necessarily, because again, the more you experiment, the more mm. you'll find what works for you. Mm. Uh, it can be very wet, and then and it, things, the paint just goes everywhere. Mm. Or if you mm. if you prefer to have a bit more control, mm. you can put some water on, let it soak in and dry a little bit, and then add and do sort of a, mm. uh, a little bit of uh, wet on wet. Or if you just want to make you know put a lot of water into your actual paints and then paint directly on dry pa dry paper, you can do that's that. That's another option. Fantastic. Um, but I just like the fact, in the, with this technique, if you make a mistake, sometimes it ends up working for you. Yeah, and it, it's yeah, be, it's yeah. better as well. Um, another thing that people might be wondering, I forgot to mention it earlier, uh, I'm currently using watercolour paper yes. um, rather than just cartridge paper or oh, whatever. Okay. Um, because once you've wet, say, normal printer paper or sketchbook paper, it will buckle a little bit. Mm -hmm. This does tend to buckle ever so slightly, but yeah. it will depend on how much paint you put on. Okay. Um, but at, at university, my tutors did encourage me a lot. They liked, they seemed to like the mess that was created yeah. if I painted on <laughs> cartridge paper. So it's, yeah. It, yeah. it's an option, and it shouldn't let it shouldn't put you off doing it if that's all you've got. Because mm -hmm. you know, again, you get you learn what works for you and what you like to do. But uh, so, what colours are we going to be using on here now? Um, I, it's a mixture of, uh, I've got uh, ultramarine, ultramarine mm -hmm. as my blue, Yeah. And I've got a lemon yellow, Okay. Um, again just in standard watercolours, Okay. Um, uh, crimson yeah. as my red, yeah. and, oh, and burnt umber. Um, and if you, ever, if you ever want to mix a black at home, yeah. uh, the, these three, you can mix your own black rather than just using it straight from the... Um, so there's a good range yeah, there. Yeah. And again, it doesn't matter really who makes them. The important thing is that you get good quality ones, isn't it? Good good quality uh, inks and pigments. Yeah, yeah. Well, these, yeah. I'm fairly new to these Turner Artists watercolour. Okay. Uh, a friend from college recommended them to yeah. me. And you like and those? Nice, good big uh, tubes. And they're, yeah. they're pretty good value. Yeah. And she's a you know, pretty amazing artist herself. So good. the fact that she uses them made me think that was the, the way to go. Um, and also mixed in for the more vibrant colours, uh, we have the uh, PH yeah. Martins uh, concentrated watercolours. Yeah, the ones with my favourite name. I like the, like the way they're named. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So I can't help noticing as you move on from the one that we've got here that you're sort of replicating, 
I love the whip of the tail on here and uh, and the effect that you, you're going to be doing for us, which really makes it look like his movement. He's not, stat he's not static, he's moving around. I say he because we have called him Eric. So yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. stuck with that now. So we're stuck with that now. <laughs> um, but um, it, yeah, it, it just gives you some feeling of motion, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's, again, part of what's so fun about watercolour. The mm. most fun bit that everybody is bound to like at the end will mm. be when I do the paint splatters. Ah. Although it is a bit messy. Yeah. And, um... We don't mind that. We don't mind a bit of mess, do we? We don't um, mind a bit of mess. Um, you can see here, maybe almost see where the I put the wax relief crayon. Uh -huh. The paint is coming away from it. And it just gives a very subtle texture, nothing definite. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's just, just fun. Um, again, and that's what's fun about dinosaurs, because you imagine they do have a bit of a texture to their skin of mm -hmm. some sort. What I'm also going to do, another fun little thing uh, for texture, uh, I've got some table salt, just standard table salt. You okay. can also use rock salt. And if you sprinkle it over oh. the wet watercolour, you can see it, it absorbs some it of the It looks almost scaly. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. it? Which um, really adds to the uh, of, uh, effect, particularly on, on uh, a painting like this where you've got a dinosaur reptile. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah, the rock salt will give you bigger chunks. Of, yeah. you, know, you do have to be patient and let it dry before yes. you... You, you rub it off afterwards, yeah. and I think with this one, they might even left a sort of slightly glittery texture to yeah. it. I don't know if that, that's probably well. Just most a bit crafters of salt out there like a bit of glitter, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Crafters <laughs> like a bit of glitter. Yeah. Right, and then on to his tail. Again, mm -hmm. I haven't drawn a lot. I drew the beginning of his tail with pencil, but because mm -hmm. I didn't want to you know, be defined and having to draw it a certain way, um, I'm just going to then finish it off and it doesn't matter if your paint starts bleeding into the tape again then to the, the new water it's mm -hmm. all just part of the fun and then you can just whip it around whatever way you want mm. <laughs> whichever direction up down you can make them look more angry or you know teals have say a lot they're yes. quite a, a lot of expression in them and then just just so it goes quite finely towards the end yeah some lemon yellow in there just to colors work up so well together yes yeah, so that's another thing adding you can go back and add in and if you do little blobs just with the paintbrush of mm. either a darker color or a lighter color yeah you know it just adds again just a little bit more texture I really like the salt effect I think that's excellent as well yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said the rock salt's good fun as well mm. um, it just depends you know how much detail you want in it or what you know how fine the texture is uh, and then I shall just do a little bit of just to show where he's that he's standing something and then the fun right. flicky bit we'll do the fun messy bit yeah <laughs> so pick you know your sort of favorite or the brighter colors okay um I for this one I because he's shaking his little Thin yeah. things there I'm going to flick some paint just put some wet paint mm -hmm. on your brush and just pick it oh. but just remember to clear anything out of the way that you don't want flicked with paint yeah <laughs> I've got a uh, whole uh, pad of paper spoiled it's got <laughs> all, all flicks on it but, uh, and then just a little bit around his tail A bit like me when I get out of the shower. <laughs> like that. And maybe just some I thought that would work well if you would do a watercolour dog. Yes, shaking yeah, after, after charging for yeah. It's fantastic. Well, do you know what? We're rapidly running out of time. Yeah, but I, I can't believe how quickly <laughs> you've managed to put that together. That's very, very impressive indeed. Very impressive indeed. So, um, Christine, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here on the craft show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, and you're welcome back anytime. And I hope you will come back and share some more creative watercolours and art. And don't forget, one last time, where can we find you if you want to find a bit more about you? 
uh, www.pristinedobbin.com is my new website which I'm learning as I build <laughs> fantastic uh, yeah, and you're on Facebook. Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of these weird and wonderful <laughs> stuff that all goes above and beyond me uh -huh. uh, but check Christine out and uh, don't hesitate to uh, uh, to drop her a message I'm sure if there's you want some tips or tricks or advice yeah. uh, get in contact with her and uh, all that's left to do is to say thank you very much as well to the craft outlet here at Springfields in uh, Springfields in Spalding and until next time we hope you have a very crafty afternoon we'll see you soon bye, bye.